Chapter 17, do we stay at an inn? Now remember, the situation is such that the Cornelians have crashed out in a ditch. It is getting dark, and they need to make a decision as to what they're going to do because they cannot get the carriage out of the ditch. As per usual, as I go through this translation, use a tab on the multiple choice, vocabulary, and there'll be three embedded items to reward you for watching it as a 100. So let's start. Erat un decibahor. It was. This is, of course, the imperfect of sum esse. Present sum est est. He, she, or it is. Imperfect eramaras erat. He, she, or it was. The 11th hour. Now remember that the hours of the Romans begin from 6 to 7 a.m. for us, which is their first hour of the day. So to go to 11 would be 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 p.m. is what we would call it. They call it the 11th hour. Nevertheless, this is, remember, a ordinal number, and the difference is that ordinals, primus, secundus, tertius, first, second, third, is different than the cardinal numbers, unus, duo, tres, one, two, and three. The minivan, the rider, was still a hook remaining in the ditch, in plus an ablative, it's just in, because the coachman, the guy who drives the minivan, so if a rider is the minivan, Rydarius is the minivan driver, was not able to move it. Aeon is feminine and could mean her, but since it's referring to the minivan, a non-person, we say it. Poterot is nothing more than erot with P-O-T on the front. This is, of course, coming from the verb that is nothing more than sum S-A with P-O-T on the front of it. It looks like an S because of assimilation, coming similar to the other word. Second principle part would be S-A with a P-O-T, which squishes down to pose, and then po to e But when you form it in all of the different uh, tenses, all you have to do is take the form of sum S-A, in this instance, imperfect, eramaras erat, and put a P-O-T on the front of it. And that's why it is post erat. Was not able to move it. Aurelia was worried. Cornelia was crying, lacrimo, lacrimare, and even the boys were now fearing dangers. This is the second declension neuter, periculum, periculi, and that makes it accusative plural. It's the direct object. We have a tricorn crescens here. Aurelia was worried, Cornelia was crying, even the boys were now fearing dangers. Bum, 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 bum. Cornelius. The worried one was standing in the road. In English, we would say that Cornelius was standing in the road worriedly. But Latin prefers to take an adjective, modify the subject, instead of turning into an adverb, which if we were to do so, you would take off that first or second declension ending, it's a first and second declension adjective, and you would add a long e to make it the adverb with an ly in English. If it were a third declension adjective, you would of course have added the e tear. Keller, quick, keller, retair, quickly. So, Cornelius, the worried one, was standing in the road, and he was watching, again, be imperfect, the sky. And quote, now we are learning, can not only mean because, but it, if it refers to a neuter word like kylum is. Kylum is just like curriculum. Kylum, kylie, it can also mean which. The sky, which now was getting dark. Ad Vesperasco, Ad Vesperascare, but it's always third person. Ad Vesperascit in the present, Ad Vesperascebat in the imperfect, means to become dark. In other words, go towards evening, literally, is what it means. First word is that kailum, C-A-E-L-U-M. So where we get the word celestial from, indicating celestial bodies of the sky, sun, moon, stuff like that. At last, Tondam Euclides says, in quit, we days nay, video we day nay, to see. Here it's asking a question, do you see? That building master in the vocative. Video, I see. Implied it, that building. You would have the exact same form for the accusative here as the object of we days, and he would have so of course said, I see, illidatificium. Cornelius responds. Quid est, what is it? Calpona est, it is an in. Calpona is, of course, this word. Calpona, calpona. Do not confuse it with what we are about to see in a moment, the innkeeper, which is calpo, calponis. They share the exact same stem, C-A-U-P-O-N. Here it would be, but you would see it in the nominative, C-A-U-P-O-N. But here we'll have first declension endings for the in itself, the hotel motel. And over here, it would be the innkeeper with third declension endings. Do you see 
that building it is an inn. Wiesne, again from Wolo Wele. Here it is, Wolo Wies. You want, but that's a question. Do you want, therefore, Penatare, to spend the night there? Master, clamat Aurelia. Aurelia shouts out, oh, poor me, accusative of exclamation. I do not like inns. Inns in the ancient rural world had a horrible reputation, kind of like very often. We say a seedy motel. Motels sometimes have this reputation of being murder meth palaces, is what I sometimes call them. If you've ever seen the show Breaking Bad, there is a particular motel that is noted for all kinds of activity. Sometimes you have to stay overnight at one. You can be somewhat uneasy by the unsavory appearance, perhaps, of these hotels and or motels, and that's what it was like in the ancient world. I do not like inns, Aurelia shouts out. Often, Saipe, there are great dangers there. Again, pericula is from the word periculum periculi, a second declension neuter word. Continuing on, perhaps the innkeeper has other horses. Please note, Calpo, it does not have an ending. People look at that O and they think, oh, yeah, oose, E-O, that's wrong. Calpo, remember, is the nominative. It just happens to be a variant form. It's Calpo Calponis. It would have third declension endings, variant I-S, I, E-M, E. And so, in that way, it is nominative singular. The innkeeper, perhaps uh, he has other horses. Perhaps the horses, the equi, are able. Again, this is that same verb as from before, posum pose, but it's nothing more than sum s s, sum s s is sunt with a p o t on the front. It looks like an s because of assimilation. Perhaps the horses, portase equi, are able to drag out the minivan out of the inn. And they are the horses of the innkeeper. Short is genitive here. Your second word that you'll be putting in for your easy 100 is calpo. C-A-U-P-O. Calpo. Write it in. Nevertheless, I fear Timeo. I am afraid to spend the night in an inn. She thinks that she'll be murdered in the middle of the night. I'm sure that many of us have had an experience of uneasy sleeping at the motel, the seedy motel, the murder meth palace that I sometimes refer to it as. Curtimes mea domina. Why do you fear my mistress? The master, dominus, is master, but the feminine form in English is mistress. And so, my mistress, Eucleides asks, Eucleides, remember, is the tutor. No, est curriculum. It is no danger. Danger is nothing. Omnes calponi, all, first declension in the ends, are not dangerous. Omnes calpones, third declension ending, all innkeepers are not wicked. A couple of things here to point out. One is that omnes, third declension adjective, third declension ending, modifying a first declension word, nominative plural, nominative plural, they don't have the same ending because third declension adjective, first declension noun. Here they do have the same because here it is a third declension adjective and a third declension noun. And so in that way, they will have the same ending. But regardless, in both instances, same case, same number, same gender for each. Also note that in Latin, if you want to indicate an adjective meaning full of something, very often you'll put the suffix on it, osus, osa, osum. Note the word danger, periculum. It's danger itself, filled with danger, is periculosus, periculosa, periculosum. In English, when the word is converted into an English word, it's why you have aus on the end of words. So, danger, danger raus, literally filled with danger. And so, think of tons of examples in which that is the way. Say, for example, take the word fame, fama. So, what does the Latin word mean? Filled with fame? Famosus, famosa, famosum. And so I do then say fame aus. Osus turns into that aus. And that's your next word. Periculosa. P E R I C U L O S A E. That is your third word. There's going to be five, probably total. So he says, all inns are not dangerous. All innkeepers are not wicked. Ile Calpo, that innkeeper, again nominative, is my friend. 
And remember, all flaking verbs are equal signs. So you're going to have nominative on both sides. Nominative there, nominative there. And so that innkeeper is my friend. He is Greek, Graikus est, and a good man. One of the reasons why Euclides knows him is that because Euclides himself is Greek. Tomb Aurelia. Now, this is when, of course, the true reasons of Aurelia not wanting to stay at the end. It's not really that she is, of course, scared. It's because she is snooty and thinks she's better than that. Snooty voice. Cornelius is a Roman senator. Roman senators do not spend the night. No one cannot talk in inns. So where would they spend the night? They would spend the night in the house of a host phase. Remember, a friend with social obligation. But that's not available for them. Cornelius, however, says, What are we able to do? Facio facere, quid means what? And again, sum s s sumus, s descent, with merely p-o-t on the front of it. So sumus, we are, p-o-t, able. What are we able to do? Non posumus, we are not able, per to spend the night here in the Appian Way, in the Via Appia. Remember that if ever you see H-I-C with a short I, it means this. But H long I C is going to mean here. This is in this watch, this pin. Heek is here. So we are not able to spend the night here in the Appian Way. Your next word, your fourth word, posumus, P-O-S. S-U-M-U-S. -S. Go ahead and put it in. Now, why can you not spend the night in the road in the Appian Way? That's when the real robbers and the real highwaymen, that is a term that we use for people who obviously roam the roads because obviously out in the roads you're stranded. There is no help. And that's where they get you at your vulnerable and are able to rob you. No vehicle. No vehicles. Neuter plural nominative now are appearing, present tense. Because, present tense, it is getting dark. There is no help. Illa, Calpona, that in is not far ob away. Ob s means he, she, or it is away. Now, something to point out here that I should have earlier. The word that they appears three times in this story. Please note them. The first time, illud, that. Then you see it again, ille, that. And then now you see it for a third and final time, illa, that. That neuter building. That masculine innkeeper. And that feminine in. Three different forms, just like you have litus, lita, litum. But the word that, ille, illa, illu. Masculine, feminine, and neuter. So that in is not far away. Therefore, it is necessary to go to the inn. Agate pueri. Drive on, boys. Plural command. Plural imperative, as it were. Therefore, while Eucleides led, was leading Dukebat, the many people named Cornelius, that's the family name of the family, the Cornelians, towards the inn, the Rydarius Solus, the coachman remained alone in the road. He was guarding custodio custodiere, a new word of this chapter, it's where we get the word custody, obviously, the carriage and the horses. Now, before I show you your last word, I'd like to point something out about the verb ad vesperasket. Whenever a verb has the letters SC before the O, sco, scare, this is what we call an inceptive verb or an inceptive action. Inceptive. And an inceptive verb or an inceptive action is an action that implies an instantaneous beginning that doesn't then continue on. For example, one of the most famous inceptive verbs is the verb to be born, to pop out the womb. And that, of course, and its deponent, you don't need to know about that, but nascor, don't worry about the R. Naski, don't worry about the weird form. It, instead of having an E-R-E, -E, it's, of course, an I. But as you can imagine, once you pop out the womb, once you are born, you cannot then continuously be born. Likewise, once it starts getting dark, it doesn't continue to start getting dark. And so because of the nature of what the verb is implying, 
It is what we call an inceptive. And you can recognize inceptive verbs by that SC. Sco, scere. Nasco, nascere, if it weren't deponent. Don't worry about it. But nevertheless, here it is. Ad vesperasco, ad vesperascere, indicating the start of something. Your last word is manibat, right here. M A N E B A T. He was remaining in the road. Manibat. That's what you write down in the Latin. He was guarding the carriage and the horses. So, study, learn your words, learn the content, and get better every day.